Pentecostals do not understand about Apollos, Paul, and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. This is part 10 of the False Signs and Wonders series. We've been working through this series on false signs and wonders. It's important because it's a characteristic of the upcoming, soon-to-be Great Tribulation. We're currently in the apostasy. Signs and wonders were limited to the apostolic age in the early church. It validated the apostles who were used by God to write the New Testament. These signs and wonders were also symbols of beautiful spiritual truth about the gospel. But today, Pentecostal and charismatic movements have hijacked signs and wonders. They have all types of false signs and wonders. An important argument they have, they say that the quote-unquote baptism in the Spirit is a separate experience after salvation, which is not true. And we're going to look at that, and they use this passage we're going to look at today about Apollos, Paul, and the baptism in the Spirit. They use that as a proof text. Please consider subscribing to this channel. There's a little red button in the bottom right-hand corner, and let's move on in this study. Okay, the Pentecost of baptism in the Spirit, they believe that there's two levels of being a Christian. First, they, they, the first level are people that just make a decision for Christ. They make an intellectual uh, acceptance of Jesus Christ. They believe in him. And then they're saved. They have an indwelling spirit. And that's not really the right gospel to start with. That's a false gospel because true faith is saving faith that comes. It's called the faith of Christ and it comes from God. But then after that, after they say that people are saved, Sometime later, they say there's this baptism in the Spirit. And the initial evidence is speaking in tongues, and they have all type of other signs and wonders. And therefore, there's two levels of being a Christian. The higher level, of course, is them, the Pentecostals and Charismatics, because they believe they're baptized in the Spirit, and that's why they speak in tongues. It's a fundamental error. It's a desire for the flesh. It's desire for false signs and wonders. Okay. So we're going to go on and look at this passage that they use to try to justify that baptism in the Spirit occurs after salvation. And we see this, this passage about Apollos. He comes to Ephesus. He's, a, he's Jewish. He's a Christian. And he's a great orator. And he was a Christian. He spoke diligently to things about the Lord, but he only knew the baptism of John, which of course is baptism in water for the repentance of sins. It's not the baptism of the Spirit, which is salvation. He didn't understand fully, and uh, close uh, associates of min or ministers with Paul, Aquila and Priscilla, explained to them the truth more exactly. He didn't understand the baptism in the Spirit. Priscilla and Aquila were tent makers. They were humble ministers with Paul. And then after they explained to Apollos, he later went to Corinth and he provided great value. He was able to convince various Jews that Jesus was the Christ and he did that from the scriptures. But then Paul now comes to Ephesus after Apollos is already gone and the Holy Spirit, they didn't know the Holy Spirit. He asked them about the Holy Spirit, they just didn't know about it. The Ephesians were only baptized into water, John's baptism. Then Paul taught them that they needed to believe on Christ and at that time, they, they received the faith of Christ. God called them to himself, and they were baptized in the Spirit, which is a symbol of salvation. They spoke with tongues and prophesied because that was a validation of the early church, the apostolic church. And it's a beautiful story, but their salvation was not when Apollos preached to them, but it was when Paul came to them. So their errors are that they, firstly, Pentecostals don't understand that intellectual or simple faith is not at all saving faith. Even though Apollos was a Christian, Apollos didn't really understand saving faith, which is baptism in the Spirit. It's God doing the work, not us doing the work by going into water. It's God doing the work. Jesus is the one that sends the baptism in the Spirit. He's the source of that. Pentecostals hold the free will, do it yourself, which is a false gospel. But of course, baptism in the Spirit is salvation, it's sanctification. Let's look now at Acts 18. Let's look at the details. And first we want to understand the background of Apollos. Apollos was a very good person. He was a, he was Jew, he was a Jewish person. 
he was named Apollos, and he lived, born in Alexandria, which is in Egypt. And again, that could, Egypt typifies the land of bondage, but he had a lot of Grecian influence, therefore, in Alexandria. And, and he was very, a very intelligent individual. He was eloquent. Eloquent means, it's the Greek word logios, similar to the word logos, which means he's able to deliver a message. He can put facts together, he can relate scriptures, and he can really deliver good information in a way that's clear to understand. And he was mighty in the scriptures. He understood the law of God, the Old Testament law. He was powerful. That word mighty is powerful. He comes to Ephesus, which is a, a Grecian area, a Greek heavily uh, influenced by Grecian culture and Roman culture. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. He knows about Jesus Christ. And he was a Christian because he was fervent in spirit. He he had energy. He, he wanted to really inform people about Jesus Christ. He spoke di and taught diligently, a hard worker, the things of the Lord. But he only knew the baptism of John. He only knew about water baptism. He only knew about repentance. He, he, was, he was zealous, but he didn't yet know. We remember Acts 1-5 where, where John came baptized in water, but ye shall be baptized by Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. He didn't understand true salvation yet. He thought it was delivering information. He, he's a symbol of a person that's really a Christian, but they intellectualize the truth. They, they don't see the spiritual part. And, and maybe he, he was, didn't have all the information yet. Okay, so let's look a little bit more at Apollos and the baptism of John. He only knew the baptism of John. And we remember in Matthew 3 that John said, I indeed baptize with you, you with water, that's physical, unto repentance. It was a symbol of people needing to die to their old self, die to their sinful lifestyle. But he that comes after me, which is Jesus Christ, is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, which is going to show that what Jesus does is way, way more important. He, Jesus Christ, shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That's what Apollos didn't understand. It was the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the fact that it's the Holy Spirit that does the work of belief. People can believe and you can teach people intellectual truth, but until Christ does the work by his sovereign good pleasure and gives them the faith of Christ, then that's when they're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38, Peter said it to them, you must repent. Repent is, it, it, it points to John's baptism. It points to the need that everybody that becomes a Christian will have a change of mind. Repent literally means another mind to change the mind. You must repent and be baptized, not baptized in water, not John's baptism. You have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The baptism we need is the baptism in the Spirit, not the baptism in water. And Apollos didn't understand this. This is what he did not understand. We see that to repent, we're buried with him in, in baptism into death. That's that's good thing in Romans 6, but we have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Go on to Romans 6, which is the, is the baptism passage. We're raised, as we're raised from that symbolic water, we're raised to walk in newness of life. And that's what it is to be baptized in the Spirit. We, we have newness of life. We're now saved. We're sanctified. And we're in the likeness of his resurrection. We become a new person with a new Christian life. And Apollos didn't understand that. Just to summarize what I just said, so the baptism of John is in water. It has to do with repentance. It shows people that there's a need to die to the old person. They need to turn from their sin. Repent. Repent. Metanoia is another mind. That's what it literally means. And But then there's the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is salvation. You're raised to walk in newness of life. You're a new spirit, a new man, new creation. You're born again. You're born from above. You have the, the faith of Christ, not your, your intellectual faith. You're given the faith of Christ and you're a Christian at that point. And then you're sanctified. You're washed from that sinful lifestyle. You're made clean and pure. And, and little by little, we're changed from one glory to another in righteousness. Okay, so now comes Aquila and Priscilla. Apollos did not understand the baptism in the Spirit. So Aquila and Priscilla, they're, they're, they come to him and they expound unto him the way of God more perfectly. And they, they took him aside. And the word more perfectly is literally more exactly. 
Apollos was a Christian. He he understood the things about Christ, but but he didn't understand the baptism of the Spirit, and they needed to inform him. And we see later they're close associates of of Paul. We see in Acts eighteen earlier in the same chapter, Paul found a certain Jew named Aquila and his wife Priscilla, and they were a beautiful team. And they came unto them, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, and for their occupation was tent makers. They worked with Paul. A tent maker, also, it's, a, it's symbolic too. There's a literal physical, they were actually tent makers, but it's also used symbolically in the Bible, building the church. And isn't that what Aquila and Priscilla did with Apollos? They showed him better truth about the baptism of the Spirit, and then, then Apollos is going to go on to Corinth and be a, a very good speaker there. And we, so we see Priscilla and Aquila also are helpers. They're, 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 those, they're like those humble people, humble Christians that are, they might not be out there on the front line, but they're, they're helping and they're guiding and they're, they're, they're contributing into the ministry. Okay, so then when we see Apollos, he comes to Corinth. So when he was in Ephesus, he spoke diligently about the things of the Lord, but he only knew the baptism of John. And he did make believing disciples there. There was people that were believing, they were following, but they didn't, they weren't saved. Because there's many people that when you teach them the word of God, they're interested. That doesn't mean it's their point of salvation. Their point of salvation is when God decides it. They may be elect, they may be called, but until God actually baptizes in the Holy Spirit, they're not saved. That's the point of salvation and sanctification. But then we notice when Apollos comes to Corinth, He's different. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And Crispus believed in the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians heard, believed, and were baptized. So when Paul was there, they heard. They not only had faith, but they had the baptism in the spirit. So Acts 18, verse 27, 28. Here comes Apollos, who when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. So Paul had planted the seeds People actually were converted. They became Christian. And here comes Apollos now, mighty in the scriptures. And we see again here in Acts, 20, uh, Acts 18, he mightily convinced the Jews. He was so good at examining and relating Christ to the Old Testament. He was very valuable and he was a great teacher. And that publicly shown by the scriptures, the, that is the Old Testament, that Jesus was a Christ. He went to Isaiah 53. He went into the book of Zechariah. He went and he said, you see, this is the fulfillment of what, what we believe in the Old Testament. So Apollos has his place in the church. But it wasn't until he was shown a more perfect way that he found his, his place in the teaching part of the church. Okay, okay, so now we're going to switch back. So now Paul, they kind of switch places. Now, Paul was in Corinth and Apollos came after him. And now in, in Ephesus... Uh, first it was Apollos, and now it is Paul. And Paul's going to find something out. It comes to pass when Apollos was at Corinth, Paul now comes to Ephesus. They switch places. And he found certain disciples, people that were following. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. Apollos was there, but he didn't know, understand the Holy Spirit. He didn't understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Disciples are not necessarily saved Christians. Believers are not necessarily saved Christians. It's only when we are given the faith of Christ and we're baptized in the Spirit. That's the point of salvation. We see, for example, about disciples, John 6, 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with them. There's a lot of disciples. There's a lot of people that read their Bible, a lot of people that go to church, a lot of people that turn their TV on and watch all type of programming about religion. That doesn't make them Christian. That just makes, makes them a disciple. They're, they're, they're searching, they're following. But again, until they receive that baptism of the Holy Spirit, salvation, the faith of Christ, they're not yet saved. We also see in John 8, 31, Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, there was a lot of people that believed on Jesus. If ye continue in my word, are you my disciples indeed? Many people believe they're disciples for a while and then they fall away. That happens all the time. Believers are not necessarily saved Christians. And we see another perfect example of an unsaved 
baptized believer, a baptized in water that is, Simon the sorcerer. And we looked at this in the last video, which I'll tag on the slide. Peter said unto him, your money perish with you because you thought you, you, that the gift of God may be purchased with money. And again, Simon was baptized in water. He was a believer. But Peter, or, yeah, Peter says, you have neither part nor lot in this matter. Your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven you. For I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness and the bond of iniquity. All things that describe somebody that's not a Christian. But again, it's a picture of somebody that believes they go through water baptism, they go to church and they're involved, but they're not really a Christian. OK, and here are just some more examples of people that were believers, but they're unsaved because they're, they're not baptized in the spirit. They're not chosen they're not don't have the faith of christ the demons believe people with faith faith and belief it's the same word in the greek people that believe without good works it's dead belief it's, it's not faith of christ it's just their own belief and there's many people like that not everyone who says lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven and we have several other examples here but just there's a lot of examples in the bible on people that are believed but they're not saved Okay, so now we want to look at Pentecostals, what they believe about salvation, because when they believe in the baptism of the Spirit, they believe that that's a second blessing about signs and wonders. It's, it's after salvation. And what we find, though, is that Pentecostals, they not only believe in false signs and wonders, they not only most of them believe in false prophecy about this pre-mill and pre-trib and dispensationalism and all that, but they also believe in a false gospel. And that gospel is called free will. It means that anybody can just make their own decision for Christ. Make a decision for Christ, accept him today. You just walk down this aisle, you come to the altar tonight and you will be saved. You can save yourself. It's a do it yourself gospel. And that's not what faith is. The faith that we're saved by, and I'll tag this slide with an important video we did on saving faith. Saving faith is the faith of Christ. It's given to us by his grace, by his sovereign good pleasure. It's given to us as a gift. And once we have that gift, which, it, which is the baptism in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell us, to, and the Holy Spirit cleanses us, and we convicts us. And now we want to turn from our sin. We, do, we will repent, and we'll be living a holy life, albeit not perfectly because we're still in the flesh, and we still need to be changed from glory to glory and we're learning and we're growing but we still have that convicting holy spirit dwelling in us we have the power of wanting to learn the word of god and we can understand the word of god and with that as a background then we read this scary passage in matthew 7. not everyone that says unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven and in other words there's many people out there that believe in jesus they even call him lord you know lord this lord that that's our lord praise the lord but he the only ones that enter the kingdom of heaven is he that does the will of my father in heaven we're not saved by works of course but once we're saved with the faith of christ the holy spirit washes us cleanses us makes us holy delivers delivers us from a sinful lifestyle it's not by works, it's completely, our salvation and our sanctification is completely by the grace of God. And then many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? We taught all this about, about premillennialism and dispensationalism. We did all these things in your name. And in your name, we cast out devil. We had deliverance services. We helped these people's lives. And in your name, we've done these wonderful works. We've done all this speaking in tongues and we've, we've planted seed faiths of giving and, and all these things. And we've taught people about that. And Jesus will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. They don't see that what they do is wrong because they don't have the Holy Spirit to enlighten them. Pentecostalism is a false gospel concerning salvation. And they don't understand that the Holy Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Spirit is for sanctification of the Spirit. It's to make us holy by purification. God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation. From the beginning, we're elect through sanctification of the Spirit. That baptism in the Spirit, that washing of, in the Spirit, that's what causes us to be saved. That's the moment of salvation. And belief of the truth, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is enlightening the Word of God to us. First Peter 1, 2, we're elect. 
same word as chosen, chosen and elect, same Greek word, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience. The sanctification of the Spirit results in holiness. It results in doing the will of God and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. So let's now return to Acts 19. And now we have Paul. He's in Ephesus and he's facing the Ephesians and he's, he's wondering what's going on. And he said, well, unto what were you baptized? And they said, John's baptism, which of course is in water for repentance. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. The baptism of repentance is not enough. That's a symbol, it's water baptism about needing to repent. What's needed though is the saving faith, the baptism in the spirit. It's, it's, that's what's needed. And we see in John chapter six, Jesus said that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him, him of my father. So it's the point of salvation that the Ephesians are now faced with the point of salvation. They need to have the saving faith. Philippians 1, 29, it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but to suffer. Faith is given to us. They still, they only received the John's baptism. They need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and it needs to be given to them. Okay, and salvation though comes to Ephesus. We see it when they heard this, when they heard this, they heard the word of God. They heard Paul preaching. Then they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not John's baptism, not baptized in water, but they're baptized in the Spirit. And when Paul laid hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They were not saved. They were elect. They were called. They were believing. But they were not yet elect, saved. They did not have the Holy Spirit. And they, to validate that, they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12. So and this recalls for us the importance of being baptized in the Spirit. Acts 2.38, Peter said unto them, repent. That's the, one has to repent. And again, God is the one that causes that to happen. And be baptized. And that's the baptism in the Spirit. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's all about the point of salvation. It's the point of salvation, John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells in you and shall be with you. This, this spirit of truth, this Holy Spirit, now indwells them. They're now saved because they have the indwelling Holy Spirit. And this is the point of salvation. The Pentecostals want you to believe it was under Apollos. No, that, the, he just made disciples. The true point of salvation is right here. Just a quick summary of this study. The ministry of Apollos in Ephesus resulted in believing disciples. They were called, but they were not yet saved. And this is similar to Pentecostals that assume that people were saved before the baptism of the Spirit, which isn't true. Because the baptism of the Spirit is the point of salvation. In Ephesus, Apollos only taught the baptism of John to repent. Apollos was a, a, a good order. He was fervent in spirit. He meant well. Aquila and Priscilla are the ones that, the, the humble tent makers that corrected and helped Apollos understand the gospel. And then Paul came later, preached the baptism of the spirit, resulted in salvation with signs following. This, is, this validates that the baptism of the spirit is the point of salvation. And it's exactly what the Pentecostals don't understand. Now we're going to move on to the next video, which is speaking in tongues. It's a very important study because it's so prevalent among Pentecostals and Charismatics. Please consider subscribing to this channel and thank you very much for watching this video.